welcome to the hey. Metal Voice. Hey, Alan. The Mandrake Project. This is the seventh studio album by Iron Maiden's vocalist Bruce Dickinson. It will be released on March the 1st. It has been 18 years since yeah. Bruce's last. 18, 19, 18, 19? 18, 19, 18, 19. Oh, we're 2024, <laughs> you know. Yes. You know what? It's been 10 years him and Roy Z have been working on this album. It's insane. It's a concept album. It's a dark story about power and abuse and a struggle for identity set against the backdrop of scientific and occult genius. <laughs> also, there's a comic book by Z2 yeah, yeah, that, well. that illustrates this whole uh, idea and this concept uh, of the story. Uh, it was created by Bruce Dickinson, scripted by Tony Lee, with a stunning illustration by Staz Johnson for Z2 Comics. So that's really Release cool. date March 1st. Yeah. We got yeah. teased before Christmas, right? With the, yes, yes, with yes, the yes. afterglow of Ragnarok. <laughs> and now the whole album with, the, like you said, the whole package. Yeah, yeah. All right. Overall thoughts. The book was already Overall launched. Thoughts. Thoughts. Um, yeah, man, you know, I, I Bruce Dick is obviously, you know, saw him on his first solo tour for a tattooed millionaire. Didn't really get into maybe his other stuff until maybe the chemical wedding and the tyranny of souls. And, but uh, this one is, you know, after the Ragnarok, I didn't like it as much as you did. Uh, but I think listening to this whole album. You know, I thought it was something really, really different for him. But then going back and listening to, like, The Chemical Romanding and Tyranny of Souls, you can see a lot of similarities, you know. It's been so long, like you said. You got to go back and revisit, but you do see some similarities. It's not it's not like as unique as I, I thought it was, Bruce. I, I, got the, I, I got the kind of opposite feeling of that. I, I found that, okay, Accident of Birth, The Chemical Winning, and Tyranny of Souls, those three albums, there's hints of, of 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 you know sounds and vibes on this album, but I wouldn't say there's repeat. No, 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 no. Exactly. There's no repeat. It's not like oh man, that just sounds like you know the song off of Accident of Birth. There's no repeats on this. There's not like he's copying something from the past. Just little hints and little vibes and little feelings. Yeah. and little sounds. Like I said, I listened to the whole album and I said, oh, this is really different. This is something really different for Roy and Bruce. Yeah, yeah. But then listening to Tyranny of Souls, you know, you can say, oh, well, you know, it's not, if, it's not all that different. There are, there are, you know, it's not, it's not like a complete uh, 90 degrees in an opposite direction or 180. It's, you can, like you said, there's little hints of, of some of the prior stuff in this album. So I would say, like, in production wise, I listened to Bruce's past albums, and I think this is definitely a step up in terms of production. Bigger, brighter, bolder, right? Um, I love how, like, I listen to it on headphones and I listen to it on stereo, and it's 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 well placed. All the instruments are perfectly placed. You know, all the mix, the mix is right. What do you think? Yeah, or is he not only a yeah. producer, right? guitars, and even a little bit of bass work on this? So, all right, let's just go through the songs. Our thoughts, quick feelings on the songs. All right. Yeah. After Glow of Ragnarok. Uh, I don't know if it was a video that kind of turned me off. It seemed to be a little over, uh, what's the word I look for? Over dramatic performance. The song's good, but I don't know. We're just listening to the song I, without the video, I, I kind of enjoyed the song a little bit better. But I, I, you know, I can understand why they led with this. Obviously, a concept album and everything, but I think there's some stronger songs on, on the album. I loved it. It sets the tone for the rest of the album. It sort of, it opens it up. Um, it's like a compact prog rock song. The opening track is brilliant. All right. Many Doors to Hell, what'd you think? I love it. I love it. I mean, you know, it's a really a catchy song. At the very root of this song, it's like a rock and roll riff, you know? Uh, it's really one that I think is one of the stronger ones on the album. Where Iron Maiden, as of lately, you know, longer tracks, more of a rougher production. This is where his solo career, Bruce, differs from Iron Maiden. You know, quick, to the point, catchy, melodic, big production, 
beautiful midsection, you know, floating guitar, lead track, lead solos by, by Roy Z. I don't know, straightforward, upbeat, and it's it's just to the point. That's what I would agree. All right. Yeah. Rain on the Graves. I know this has been very polarizing for a lot of Maiden fans, right? Some people love it. The others, not so much. Yeah, you got a new video that came out uh, for that. I think it's kind of got a nice groovy beat. I love the breakdown with the chorus. Uh, it is an eerie, eerie video and an eerie uh, song. Uh, again, I, you know, a great, a great track. I really enjoyed this album, and it, this is another strong track. To me, it was "The Devil Went Down to Georgia." Remember that song where yeah, uh, yeah, Charlie Daniels, <laughs> Charlie Daniels band, and a little bit of Deep Purple. You know, um, dramatic keyboard moments. Dad. You know, <laughs> so I think the real fans of Bruce Dickinson's solo years, they'll appreciate this song. Whereas the Maiden fanatics of the golden era of Maiden, I want Rothschild again 30 times. They not so much, right? They might not get it. So, but I love it. I, I think it's another great song. Yeah, it's something really different. That's what Bruce does on his solo work, right? He's not, he's not uh, afraid to go out there and try new things. That's for sure. And then this is an example. I mean, I, I can't see Maiden doing this song at all. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that that's I guess that was my point, right? Yeah. So, even got so, a deep yeah. purple vibe. Even a deep purple vibe, which Bruce loves, right? So that's really yeah. cool. No, I, I I like this a, I like this a lot. Resurrection Man. Resurrection Yeah, it's got man. a little bit of a you know, western feel to the intro. Uh, it's the slow middle eight. It's got a really like a Black Sabbath feel to it, you know. Uh, six minutes. I think it could have been a little tighter, but uh, six minutes twenty four seconds is the track. Uh, it's it's not my favorite on the album, but it does have a few. Uh, like I said, that breakdown in the middle with the Black Sabbath uh, feel to kind of a more of a doomy. Uh, it's not one of my strongest tracks on the album, but it, it's a good listen. Just to say. for me, I, I, again, I'm going to keep saying this, Alan. This, Alan, this is brilliant. Flamenco guitar, like you mentioned, a little Latin beat going on, and that's probably from uh, Roy Z's heritage, right? Bruce soaring into this big vocal, and then you got uh, is that Geezer Butler there? Is that Tony Iommi in the midsection, right? Yeah, Playing yeah. those doom chords, and then it goes back to sort of this atmospheric sequence. And then the flamenco guitar comes back in. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm a huge prog fan. And to me, this is, it's a compact prog song. They're not going off for 20 minutes, like 2112 here. It's all just like a compact little, yeah. a lot of changes, a lot of tempo changes, a lot of, uh, just a lot of everything. It just, it's all mixed in. To me, it wasn't long enough. I don't know. I, that's, that was my feeling. I love yeah, it. No. Again, another, another 10 out of 10 for me. Brilliantly executed. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliantly, Brilliantly executed. Brilliantly executed. All right. Fingers in the wounds. I like this track a lot. He's got, you know, a lot of more orchestral feel to it. Um, there's even a bit of a sound was Arabian sounding break. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so something again, this is uh, this is what I you know, 339, three minutes, thirty-nine seconds. I think this is kind of what Bruce does best. Like really him and Roy kind of really changing it up. And not not afraid to do something new or say some new sounds incorporated in that, which is something you know Maiden has always been strong on, right? Like, yeah, I think you nailed it. The symphonic, the orchestration piece, or maybe on the chorus in the beginning, and uh, it's got a Man of Sorrows a vibe, but it's bigger than that because of the symphonic sounds. And I like that little Arabic uh, groove there that's that's happening, you know, uh, in the middle, which makes it another twist another little twist that's really cool so i agree with you it's a great track and here we go now we're doing a cover song of a cover song of a cover song eternity has failed instead of if eternity if eternity should fail so notice the the slight little change in the wording there yeah yeah with the intro you know he, bruce is releasing his inner J jethro tull uh, and uh, you know, a great song is a great song. Here's, a, here's another example of that. I didn't really go back and compare the two to see all the different changes besides besides the, the intro. I thought it was a little different. 
But it's just a great song. I enjoyed it when it was released with Maiden, and I enjoyed it equally you know, on this album. So what I did, Alan, is exactly what you just said. I went <laughs> back it, and right? I compared each song. And again, I didn't get all the lyrics. I'm not sure if the lyrics are identical. But instead of saying eternity has failed, he says on the chorus, if eternity should fail. Actually, Book of Souls was if he should fail. This one was eternity has failed. And the difference is there's... In, in the midsection, there's a guitar solo. Now that's replaced by a keyboard solo, a very yes, mini Moog like keyboard solo. But the production is a lot beefier than the maiden sort of caveman sound, we'll call it, <laughs> off of Book of Souls. <laughs> I find it's more balanced. The little keyboard sort of lurking in the background makes the song a little more full and more balanced, if you ask me, than to the original. I do like the original as well, but this one's. I enjoy it more. So a cover. Oh, you didn't enjoy it more. Okay. I, Mistress. I, I, I don't know. I kind of like the maiden version a little better. Mistress of Mercy. Yeah. I mean, it's got a little bit of a psychedelic sound to it, especially at the end. Uh, you know, it reminds me of Samson, Bruce's band Samson. You know, it's, it's, it's more of a straightforward, catchy, uh, anthemic. This could easily have been a Samson song and and it really and there's another twist and turn here if you listen really carefully there's a jazz fusion chaotic guitar sound and at the end there's some sort of chaotic jazzy playing with the drums which I haven't heard on any of Bruce's past solo albums and that definitely is an injection of Roy Z and all his little influences that he puts into songs Always twists and turns, Alan. Always twists and turns. <laughs> yeah. The Chemical Wedding, maybe a hint of The Tower, if people know that song from The Chemical Wedding. There's a little bit of that there. Face in the Mirror. Here we're, Now we're going slow. We're slowing down. Yeah, uh, the acoustic. Right, we're slowing down a little bit. I really enjoyed this. I think the back, you know, the last, uh, the last songs on the album were even stronger, one can argue, than the first songs on the album. Go ahead, keep going. I'm, I'm gonna give no, no, I mean, I really like this, you know, the acoustic, and now you got an acoustic guitar, more of an acoustic sounding track. And uh, uh, you know, the, the lyrics are great, the, the singing's great on it. Uh, I really enjoyed Face in the Mirror. I think I enjoyed the song, every part of the song except the chorus. I found because he sings Face in the Mirror, it's just sort of like a boring melody, maybe. If there's any track that I didn't like so much, is this song. But the saving grace is the acoustic guitar that you mentioned. And it kind of reminds me a bit of uh, taking the queen from accident of birth, a little bit of that. It's an okay track, uh, man of sorrow-ish type of song. But I find that the chorus is a little bit of a letdown. It's a little, it's a little too predictable in melody-wise and lyric-wise. But right. it's not a horrible song. It's just a little predictable. All right, Shadow of the gods yeah i mean this one they want to talk about prog like you said earlier i mean this is a perfect example of that right i mean starts off kind of moody right and then kind of slower and then gets more of a groovy feel to it and then by the end you're just thrashing along it's like a thrash song almost so um, you know could be in a seven minutes it is one of the longer tracks on the album and uh, yeah, there's so much going on there. You have to listen to it three or four times to really appreciate everything that, that's going on in that song. So I, I really enjoyed that track. Yeah, me too. Uh, it starts off with a nice little piano piece, like Empire of the Clouds off of Book of Souls. And then Bruce is like crooning, singing dramatically. And then it's what you said. It goes back into this little Black Sabbath hypnotic riff. And Bruce is like barking out the lyrics, right? Yeah. <laughs> And it does clock at 702. And I think the people who want the trooper are not going to be happy with this song. You know, um, again, it's a mini prog sound. Very this is what I wrote to describe it. Emotional, atmospheric, bombastic. Yeah, I got moody, groovy, and then thrashy. Yeah. So <laughs> close. We're kind of on the same page. All right. The last track, Sonata, Immortal, Beloved. I I it, I love the guitar tone on this song. Yeah. Uh, 
if we ever get around to interviewing Roy Z, I mean, that's one of the questions I, I would have had for me. Was what, what he did on different on this song compared to other songs on the album, guitar wise. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's the longest track on the album to close it out. Does it set up something for another concept album ten years from now? I, you know, uh, but yeah, it's a it's a great way to finish the album, and uh, it's, I think it's, it's another strong track. I mean, they're all they're all like you said, they're all very strong albums. I'll give you my uh, my take on this. Eerie, elegant, completely out of the box, the goose bump, bump stuff. Oh. I, I, I don't know. I thought this was like, a, this clock's at nine minutes and 51 seconds. And then he's screaming, save me now. He's just, save me now. He's just, he's drowning, right? He, he, that, that type of vocal, dramatic, uh, whining in a, like this minor key. And it does start off with a little bit of a techno beat, if you remember that. But man, this song really opens up and it's 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 eerie, it's dramatic, and it's elegant. And it's just, I don't know, I just another favorite track of mine. If I took all these songs, the only one that's kind of weak for me would be um Face in the Mirror. But you know, Alan, I'm calling it right here. I'm calling it right here. Album of the year for me. For oh me, wow. Album of the year. I'm, these are big words. These are big words. Yeah, I mean, you know, choosing a lead single, I think even Bruce said he had problems doing it. There's, there's so many strong tracks on that. Uh, I would, You know, Rain on the Graves is a great follow-up, but, I mean, you know, Many Doors to Hell could have been a strong lead-off single as well. So there's obviously a, a concept here that, it, you know, in a comic book and a whole story that goes along with it, so the sequencing is important. Uh but yeah, yeah, you know, like I said, uh, giving it a listen, listen to the whole thing, I thought it was really something different, something that we've probably all been waiting for all this time. And everybody's, this is probably the, one of the most anxiously awaited albums of this year, 2014. So, uh, yeah, I'm anxious to see what the reactions overall. I think it's, like you said, this is already your choice for early in 2014 for album of the year. And, that's what I usually do. See what how everybody else compares to to this album. If that's the case, right now, now you got the benchmark <laughs> for everybody else throughout the years. You know, Alan, you know it's amazing. This album reminds me of Operation Mindcrime in the sense that you could listen to every song by itself, and it's not really connected as one concept, right? Or, sorry, one song. I mean, like you could listen to every song individually, and it feels like they're all by themselves. The songs. You don't have to listen to them in a sequence yeah. as one piece. Like 2112 would be a song where you have to listen to it in one piece. Listening to bits and pieces of it just doesn't make sense. But this album works on multiple levels. It works on the level of listen to it as one piece, as one concept, one story, or you can listen to it as you like this song or that song individually. And it works and the, as well. What, what do you think? The vocals, for me, I mean, Bruce, unbelievable. Stunning. You know, and, and with Kevin Shirley, you and I discussed this on past reviews of the Maiden album. It's like he, with everybody playing live in the studio, he's always like, like almost screaming to just be heard. And he's on a higher range. And, you know, sometimes it's not a, a pleasant listen. But for this, I mean, this is Bruce in his element. Man. And this is, this is really in his comfort zone. And I think it's, his vocals are so the strongest we've heard in a long time, personally. You know what? Everything you said, absolutely true, man. Three guitars. He's yelling over the guitars. The drums. It, it, it sounds like sometimes he's just yelling over the guitars. Here, you, you nailed it, man. He's he's in the sweet spot. He's exactly where he needs to be vocally, and he could express himself, you know, with his range, with his with his emotions, and he could really bring out the lyrics, and people can hear them. And it, I don't know. It's just Alan. I said it. This is the album of the year. I don't know. Maybe there's something else that might impress well, me more. But, good, no, but I'm putting I mean, this on record here. It's February like, right now. It's February. This is, like I said, everybody's going to have to match up this all year long for you. Right? This is what you'd be comparing it to. Anything else is released after this. You're going to say, ah, not as good. Or, hey. Good. <laughs> I know. It's a long anticipate. I mean, even when we saw him do his uh, live... Uh, an evening with Bruce Dickinson. He said, I got an album coming out. Everybody was like, at first in shock, like, what are you talking about? And then uh, eruptions of applause because everybody's 
you know, 2005 was a long time ago. So. Yeah. Well, um, any final thoughts? I highly recommend the album. It was a pleasant listen. Uh, I'm sure it's going to go very well. They'll probably chart well. Uh, it's Bruce and his element. Bruce and Roy doing what they do best took decades in the making, but they came up with something really of quality. And I think uh, I'm anxious to see the comic book, see how that plays out. So uh, if there's any more videos being planned. So. I'm going to say this for the fans who love Bruce's solo work, they're going to love this album. They're going to think it's his best album because they could the appreciate anthology. Because <laughs> they, <laughs> they could appreciate the diversity in, in sort of the songs, right? But the guys, those hardcore, hardcore, hardcore Maiden fans who just want another ace is high, they might be disappointed. And the metalheads who enjoy diversity will love this album as well. So, that's yeah, it's got a bit of everything. You're right. Now that you mention it, you know, uh, yeah, and the sequencing, I think the sequencing is done really well. And the musicianship. I mean, it's just a really great listen. I, I, again, uh, like I said, my, my first impression after seeing a listen to Afterglow of Ragnarok, uh, you know, I'm glad to see that the album was even stronger than just the leads off single. And actually, this is my last note. When people put it on for the first time, it's a lot of music to absorb, like a lot. There's a lot of things going on. You need to have multiple listens to truly suck up everything that's going on. And once you do, you'll see that. Brilliant. Brilliant album. Brilliant album. <laughs> an, early, an early favorite for Jimmy K at the yes. Metal Voice for Album of the Year candidate. Right. Leave your comments. Tell us what you think so far. 